Okay, let's give Justin all of our attention and applause. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, many of you have probably seen the movie Dr. Doolittle, right? Um, in this movie, he befriends and talks to many wild animals, either you know, domestic or exotic. Uh, we see this movie and we're given the notion that these animals are cute, tameable, lovable, and suitable in a household environment. And what we forget when we watch this movie is that these animals are gruesome, vicious, and bred to kill. Currently, nine states in the United States legally allow the ownership of exotic animals with a permit or the possession of a license. So you can own a bear, a tiger, a monkey. Um, there's a new epidemic of like sloths that a lot of girls are into right now. So um, you can own that. Um, I'm saying it should be illegal throughout the country to own an exotic pet, permit or not. Uh, I'll be covering the acquisition product of owning an exotic pet the negative aspect of owning an exotic pet, and the alternative domestic choice of a pet. So to begin the acquisition process of an exotic pet, uh, the sale and possession of exotic animals is regulated by a variety of federal, state, and local laws, and it varies by community and the animal. So it could matter, like let's say you're in North Carolina and you want to get a monkey, it's legal there, but in New Jersey you cannot do the same. Uh, millions of wild animals, including reptiles, large felines, non-human primates, and others are kept in private possession without any legal documents, so people don't even know about this. So let's say you go on a trip to Guatemala and you find, I think they have orangutans there. Um, you can just crate one over secretly through a black market, and you'll have it in your home without anyone knowing. Uh, the internet has drastically increased the ease in which people can find and purchase exotic animals. So right now, if let's say you're part of this sloth obsession, you could go onto Craigslist and look up a sloth and buy one from a different country and get it packaged over or shipped over for a thousand to two thousand dollars. So it's not that steep of a price, but it is illegal in most states. Um, now the negative aspect of owning an exotic pet is that many exotic pets can transmit deadly diseases, and these diseases include monkeypox, herpes B, and salmonellosis. And according to the Center for Disease Control, an estimated 90% of all reptiles carry salmonella in their feces. So let's say you have one of these huge reptiles and you clean the tank and you're not using gloves or anything, this can go into your system and end up killing you. Um, as many as 90% of all macaque monkeys are infected with the herpes B virus. And this is a common kind of like small monkey that you'll see in pictures that you guys all think are so cute and everyone wants to get them. Uh, they transmit the deadly herpes v virus. Um, it's harmful to humans, but not at all to monkeys. So um, across the country, privately held exotic animals have escaped from their enclosures and have attacked humans and other animals. And you've probably heard stories of like the uh, chimp that bit off a woman's face. I don't know if many of you have heard of it, but um, it was a pretty vicious thing and it was known to be a friendly chimp until it felt possessive over the owner and attacked one of the friends. Um, an example also is in Zanesville, Ohio. There was an ex-convict who um, owned a ton of exotic animals, such as lions, wolves, tigers, and bears. And one night, he was doing some form of prescription drugs and released all of these animals into his neighborhood and then shot himself. And so the police and the governing area had to deal with that. And I'm pretty sure there were no injuries, but I mean, imagine a lion running across your front yard. So it's pretty scary. Um, exotic pets purchased as infants are abandoned by their keepers as they age and become impossible to control. So people who get tigers as little cubs and think that they're so cute, well, guess what? They grow to 600, 700 pounds, and then you can't keep them in your house anymore. And, um, you have to get rid of them. And as a result, a lot of them are euthanized, abandoned, or doomed to live in deplorable conditions. Um, it also happens a lot in zoos where uh, they get a surplus of animals and then they have to be killed as well. Um, alternative decisions as domestic pets instead of exotic pets would be dogs. You, many of you probably have dogs. Um, they're the first animals to be domesticated. They're great around humans. They're smart, obedient, and loyal. And you can usually find a dog that can be exactly tailored to your household situation. Uh, cats, they're active and love to show affection. They can be very independent at times, which means you can like leave them outside, maybe for days, I don't know. I have never had a cat before, but 
Um, depending on the breed, they can look exotic. I know you can find some pretty crazy hairless, tiger looking, looking cats. So if you want to get something exotic looking. And then lastly, fish. Um, they're low maintenance, majestic and colorful, and they're suitable for ponds, tanks, and bowls. So that's a, an alternative to getting an exotic pet. Um, in conclusion, what has to be understood about the difference between domesticated animals and wild animals is that domesticated animals don't do well without people, and wild animals do well without people. Would you keep a cat in a fishbowl, a hamster in a horse stable, a dog in your snake tank? No, because it's not a suitable environment, and you shouldn't be keeping these exotic animals in household environments. If what I've said today affects you in any sort of way, uh, you can either petition or just keep not purchasing exotic pets, and the market will just disintegrate, essentially. Um, thank you for listening, and have a great day. Thanks, Justin. Thank um, so, some comments for Justin as we're getting ready for our next speaker?